Specifically, this session will contain segments on ratios, proportions, and percent. You hear a set of related topics that are all key basic understanding elements of lab math. They're um, mathematical concepts and procedures that are used frequently in the laboratory. So let's start first in our discussion of ratios. A ratio is a mathematical relationship between two numbers. And usually we'll say if the numbers are, say, a and B will so express the ratio as A to B. Um, and let's say we had a bowl of apples and oranges, and we have three apples and five oranges. Okay. We could express this as a ratio of apples to oranges as 3 to 5. We could also write that with a colon. Or in terms of oranges to apples, we could say it's 5 to 3. Of course, we have to state that this is but apples to oranges, and this is oranges. Apples, but that's re relationship of oranges to apples in this case. So that's a ratio. Additionally, the ratio of apples, say, to the total amount, would have a ratio of three. A, where this is apples to total fruit. It would be a 3 to 8 ratio or three of eight. So three apples out of a total. So three apples. Um, eight total fruit. Okay, so in this example, if we just had apples and oranges in there, so that we had just the eight total fruit, right, then in this ratio of three apples to total fruits, we have established a proportion. Right? So the proportion, right, is a comparison of a specific quantity. to the whole. Okay. So in this case, our apples, a specific quantity of three to the whole of eight. Okay. 
and we often express these as percentages, right? So three eighths, right? Okay, or three divided by eight is equal to point three seven five, right? Or if we do that times one hundred percent is 37.5 percent. So our proportion of apples in the bowl is 37.5 percent. Now the examples we've been working with, you know, our units in this case are all fruit. Apples are fruit. Oranges are fruit. So we've been working with the same um, same type of, of unit. Um, in the lab, we often kind of use this same notion of a proportion to um, items of, of different types of units. For instance, if we may say if we're making a cake, we may have two cups of flour. in the whole of a cake. Right. Now, in this case, uh, this proportion, we really can't do a percent because flour and cake you know, are not the, the same units. So we have the other components of the cake would be sugar and eggs and milk, some, you know, an assortment of things that are not of the same um, material um, so um, it's a little bit different situation um, than the pure proportion we're talking about but it's useful in the lab for instance if this is one cake what if we're wanting to make three cakes right well it's pretty easy to see from this that for three cakes It's going to take what? Six cups of flour. Right? Because here in this proportion or ratio of two cups of flour per one cake, right, we're keeping the same relationship when we have six cups of flour to three cakes. So we're saying that these proportions ratios are equivalent and this is a useful um, technique if you're making cakes if you want to make more cakes and you have your basic components you see that um, um, you just proportionately increase them in this case times three if you did this for the sugar and the eggs you likewise you'd be multiplying them by three Okay, so that example was straightforward enough. Hopefully, we, we can just see that um, um, without calculating it. But, but let's um, do another example here. And let's say, for instance, for our cake, I guess we're going to make an orange cake. So we want to put uh, eight ounces of orange juice in our cake. A recipe calls for eight ounces of orange juice, um, but we're going to a big gathering and we want to make five cakes. Right? And we want to know how much orange juice right, do we want to use for five cakes. Right? Now, it's very necessary to keep track of units. In this case, our units are ounces of orange juice and our number of cakes. And in a proportional equation like this, the denominators have to be the same units. In this case, 
the cakes, right? You couldn't write this as five cakes over some amount of orange juice, right? Has to be the same unit in the denominator. So the way we're going to solve for this is to cross multiply. Okay. So we have eight ounces of orange juice for five cakes. Uh, one cake times our unknown. And so here we have a denominator like cakes like so that will cancel so we wind up then with five cakes and at eight ounces per cake and so we didn't need 40 ounces of orange juice for our five cakes. So you see these were over here, these were unlike units, orange juice and cakes, but we had here the like unit in the denominator. So we have to have the like unit in the denominator to be proportional relationship so that when we cross multiply um, we can solve for that denominator. So we can express then this is this, this eight ounces of OJ per K right, as Per the division, eight ounces per cake. Let's look at a kind of laboratory example here, and, it's, and let's say that we have ten to the third bacteria per ten mils of bacteriological media. Right. And so our question here is at this uh, ratio or proportion of bacteria to, me to media, if we had one liter Had one liter of this suspension of bacteria, then how many bacteria would we have? So we can say ten to the third bacteria. Per 10 ml is equal to how many bacteria per 1 liter? And so then if we cross multiply, and we've got into the third bacteria times one liter over ten milliliters times our unknown bacteria. Ah, now. What did we say? We needed the same units in the denominator. Well, 
in milliliters is not the same units as liters, but they are related. So from our discussion on um, the metric volume relationship, we know that there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. Okay. So we can say that this is one thousand milliliters. Right. So now we have light units that we can divide so that we know 10 to the third times then 10 into a thousand would give us 100, right, which is going to give us then 10 to the fifth bacteria, right, how many bacteria, 10 to the fifth bacteria. Okay, so let's draw, call that strategy one. And let's call this strategy two. Yeah, strategy one is perfectly fine. I'm just going to show this alternative because some folks, when they solve these types of proportional ratios, will like to take it to a smaller unit and then go up. So that person would take the same problem, 10 to the third bacteria for 10 mils, and they would say, how many? in one ml, all right? So that their equation 10 to the third times one ml right, divided by 10 ml times question. So we have the like unit. So one divided by 10 is 0.1, so we would have 10 to the square bacteria per one mil. Then you have to say, okay, in the liter, in our one liter, we have 1,000 ml, so we have to take this 10 to the square bacteria times 1,000 ml is going to give 10 to the fifth bacteria. All right. Same answer. Just two ways of getting there. Directly in the first one, right, we're using the 10 ml and the liter. There again, we have to know as here that there are 1,000 ml in the liter. In strategy two, this strategy just takes the ratio down to the um, smaller unit, the one mil unit, and then at the end has to um, deal once again with the thousand. Two strategies, uh, either one is fine, depending on, on, on how your mind works. So this brings us around into our kind of third topic of percent. Now, if we go all the way back up here, right, when we're talking about our apples and oranges and we had that we had three apples out of uh, eight total fruits and right, we said that was 37.5%. So we've already talked about percent. We saw So a percent, which has this symbol, right, means of every hundred. Of every hundred, right? Program into your brain that when you see percentages, when you see that symbol, 
that the relationship is of every hundred. Let's go back to our apples. Say we're just talking about apples. Say we um, um, bought some apples. We bought 200 apples. And when we went through them, um, we found that 18 of them um, were rotten. Right. And so... We've got 18 rotten apples. Out of 200, apples. Right. So, to convert this information to a percent, it's important to remember Right, that this is out of every hundred. So if we had 18 out of 200, right? 18 out of 200, right? How many out of 100? So, right, if we can then cross multiply 18 times 100, right, divided by 200, and then we've got 1800. Divided by 200 is equal to 9. Right. So we can say 9 out of 100 are rotten. Okay, so that's nine percent. Right. So we can generalize this by saying the number with a characteristic. Out of a total number, times 100 percent, right? So, in our case, back over here, if we had 18 out of 200, right, times 100 percent, That would be 0 0.09 times 100 equal to 9. Percent. Make that clean. 9%. Now, let us notice once again that the units here, right, in both the numerator and denominator are the same. They're apples to apples, right? So um, um, they have to be um, comparable units. So in the laboratory, one really big use of, of, the, of the percent are in percent solution. Right. Your 
often going to see um, um, instructions, SOPs, procedures, recipes uh, to make up solutions that are percent. So let's say, for instance, that our instructions tell us that we want a 15% solution of ethanol. And we'll say that that's in water. Um, and let's say that we want 500 ml of that solution. So, how do we determine how much ethanol that we're going to ha have in 15 mils? So, when we say percentage, take us back to 100. So, if it's 15%, then that's 15 mils of ethanol per 100 ml of solution. And we're wanting 500 ml, and we want to know how much ethanol, right? So, 15 mils, 500 mils over 100. Emails gives us there's 100 into 5 is 5, so we have 15 emails times 5 is 75 emails of ethanol, right? Of 500 mils of solution. So we're going to take 75 mls of ethanol and bring the volume of 500 mls. So we're going to have to add 425 milliliters of water right, to give us 500 mils of a 15% ethanol solution. Okay, so that was strategy one. Which is our cross multiplication method. Taking it to a hundred. Nothing wrong with that. An alternative is a strategy two. Okay, in this case, if we know that 15% is equivalent to the decimal form of 0 0.15, we can just take that 0 0.15, multiply it by 500 ml. That's telling us that then 15% of 500 ml is equal to what? Once again, 75 ML of ethanol bring to volume 500 ml to give us 500 ml of a 15% ethanol solution. So that concludes um, this session on ratios, proportions, and uh, percentages. We'll have some follow-up uh, sessions on some specific rules for manipulating percentages and some specific uh, uh, practice, practice applications um, 